And it's a big welcome to Inside the Video Store, episode 7. You're here again, you crazy people. Um, busy show, lots to talk about. Um, first up, though, without further ado, is uh, this week's fresh produce, which, um, yeah, we're going to look at the holdovers, first of all, in this week on Blu-ray and DVD. It's the new film from director Alexander Payne, who uh, you might know from... A whole host of great films like Election, um, About Schmidt, Sideways, oh, and um, Downsizing. Downsizing. Wasn't it good? Wasn't it fun at Downsizing? But yeah. Um, but yeah, this is his new film. It is a Christmas themed comedy drama. Perfect for April. Um, and yeah, it's, it's the big film this week. It's the big film this week. Uh, licensed uh, by Dazzler in the UK from Universal. Which looks like it's uh, going to be the uh, the way things will move forward from now on, with, with with big companies not wishing to put their product out on on physical media themselves. But that's fine. But yeah, it's out on DVD and Blu-ray, and this one it does look pretty good to be honest. And you can't beat Paul Giamatti; he does tend to be an absolute acting genius. So uh, yeah, looking forward to that. It's the big film of the week. Second big film. It, it took a few quid at the box office. Actually, it took fifty-four million dollars worldwide is Night Swim. It's produced by Jason Bloom, who of course runs Bloom House, the horror production factory, and it's produced by James Wan as well, the uh, Saw uh, filmmaker. He did Dead Silence, didn't he, and stuff like that. Um, really well, got terrible reviews, uh, this one did, but then again, most horror films do get terrible reviews, so it's certainly not, uh, not a barometer to judge things by. It's directed by Bryce McGuire, uh, based on his 2014 short film. Um, and by all accounts, it looks like a, a decent little film. Um, yeah, Kerry Condon's in it and uh, Wyatt Russell. So uh, we shall have a look at that. Horror is a, is a moneymaker here. It, it, it rents out phenomenally well. Uh, I'm sure that one will pique people's interest. Uh, next up is a sequel. Well, I'll say sequel. It's kind of the second part of a two-part saga. It's uh, The Three Musketeers, Milady. Um We have the first film up there somewhere. I won't make an effort to find it or else uh, we may be here all afternoon. Uh, but yeah, this is the second part of this. It's a um, co-collaboration between France, Germany, Spain and Belgium. I think uh, the budget for this film and the prequel came in at somewhere just under 100 million euros and they filmed it back to back over the course of 150 days so it's quite an epic in all honesty um, French language uh, predominantly um, so yeah if you like your musketeer themed hijinks then this one is for you uh, finally, with the new films, only four this week, only three last week, you can see the way it's going, can't you? Uh, we have Ship of the Damned, uh, directed by Steve Lawson, uh, Lester's own. He's made 20 films in the last 10 years, um, which is quite some output, isn't it? 20 films. Most of them I've seen. Uh, he tends to work from his own creative studio, based in Leicester, um, very, very, very tiny budgets. He's making these at the moment for High Flyers Films, who uh, are producing these. Uh, although, uh, to be honest, I think of his um, his uh, the peak of his career to be uh, Hellraiser. Hellraiser. Ah, oh, yeah. This was a, a genius film that was called. Well, it was said of the British indie horror. Is alive and well," said um, said Dave Wayne. So it must be true. Must be true. I don't think I actually watched it before. I gave that quote. Kind of comes in handy. But yeah, this this uh, fact, fans, is the only um, film, only original film that eighty eight films have produced. Um, probably the last based on this experience. Uh, so yeah, produced by eighty eight films. This uh, uh, it is worth a look. To be honest, I quite liked it. And um, I, I know the two owners of 88 Films quite liked being on the set of this one. But you'll have to watch it to find out why. <laughs> yeah, that's another story for a, and maybe an After Dark episode or something like that. 
Anyway, that's all the new ones anyway, uh, and let's get on to the boutiques. As I said, I've been warming you up for this, I've been warming you up. It's a hell of a week for boutiques. Some have fallen by the wayside, a couple have been put back at Odeon. We're going to put out a few British uh, films um, in a new line, but they seem to have fallen by the wayside. A couple of other films seem to have been put back. I think it was, there was 14 out on the list originally, but that, that's thinned down to just the nine, uh, which uh, didn't get much change out of 200 quid, but, you know, that's the name of the game. Uh, first up is two from Eureka. We have Jet Li in Black Mask. Uh, the thing that makes this boutique release particularly interesting is that there's a limited edition bonus disc in here that has the Taiwan cut. So I think you get three cuts in this edition which is quite exciting uh, but yeah i haven't seen this one since the days of blockbuster video so uh, it will be interesting to have another look it is considered one of jet Li's best films and uh yeah i don't know what cut to watch that's the kind of choices we're faced with in this uh, crazy world second up we have 1927 that's 97 years old this film 97 years old the cat and the canary um made, made many many times by very many people uh, this is uh, the original, I think, isn't it? Um, so yeah, 1927, Cat and the Canary. What a release. But yeah, th this is going to be great. It's stacked with special features. You've got a new commentary there by Stephen Jones and Kim Newman. Uh, and next up, this has long been a, a favourite of, of mine. Uh, Ken Wiederhorn's film uh, with Peter Cushing, Shockwaves, Nazi Zombies. You can't beat a Nazi Zombie. Uh, if only they were all zombies. Um, oh, they, they pretty much are, really, aren't they? Yeah. Brainless. Um, yeah, this came out this week through 88 Films. One of five releases... Well, no. In fact, 88 have released more than five films this week. They've also released um, the Ivan Reitman film. What's it called? Evolution, wasn't it? But I, I didn't I didn't get that one. The penny's going to stretch so far. Um, but yeah, this is uh, one of 88's releases this week, uh, Shockways, which I haven't seen since uh, the, the heady days of DVD, so I'll look forward to that. I, I mentioned this on, I think, show one, that uh, Inspector Wears Skirts 3 and 4 were due for release, and here they are. Um, if you enjoyed the first two, uh, this next two volumes should be equally good. I don't know what they're like, I haven't seen them. But, um, yeah, can't wait to watch him. Oh, can't wait to watch him. Um, big Burt Reynolds fan. Who isn't? Uh, so it's great to see Gator uh, getting a release. A um, bit weird, since White Lightning isn't out in this country on Blu-ray yet. But nevertheless, Gator is here, which is fine. That'll do. Um, directed by Mr. Reynolds himself. Uh, not packed with special features on this. But um, there's a few bits. There's a few bits. And the main thing is it's great to have this vault range back uh, i do love the 88 volt uh, i felt it was a shame that they abandoned it because uh, i think i think they're great we, we contributed to a couple of these films we did uh, some work on one dark night uh, tom mclaughlin's film uh, and we did some work on uh, david dakota's creepazoids obviously um because it's david dakota uh, also from 88 is the latest chapter in their tygon collection two out so far this is the third the beast in the cellar Beryl Reed, you know, especially if you're in, if you're a British origin, then Beryl Reed and, and a certain age, obviously, Beryl Reed will mean will mean a, a great deal, uh, an icon of British cinema. Uh, this one looks fantastic. Uh, I think I have it as part of some, well, obviously the Saigon collection. Um, yeah, but it's been some time since I watched it, so looking forward to seeing that again. Then finally, we have Mr. Rollin, Gene Rollin, John Rollin. Again, oh, is it Roland? 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 Mm. Tricky one. Answers on a postcard. Um, we have The New Vampire. Um, and The Demoniacs. Both of which uh, can't wait to get into. Um, one from 1970, one from 1974. Again, keeping with the style of this rolling collection so far. Uh, we have the hard box, the book, and the disc as well well great additions really lavish i'm especially pleased because they're replacing these old um odeon or screen bands they're now called editions which are, are have been out what maybe about seven or eight years now 
Um, so yeah, so it's an upgrade, but I, did, I didn't get the 4K. I thought, well, the um, the uh, standard release will do, standard Blu-ray release will do. But yeah, these only had just uh, the trailer uh, on these, and uh, Screenbound aren't renowned for their care and consideration when releasing Blu-rays. So you know, it's great to have it in the definitive. You know, when you look at the special features there, and you look at the special features there. Trailers, hmm, nice. Um, there's no comparison, really, is there? So, really excited to um, stick that in the bin and get these two out in its place. Uh, a couple of boutiques next week, but this week is just a tremendous week of films. Uh, and I hope uh, that people come and rent them um, because that's the idea, really, isn't it? <laughs> Time for what's in the box. Um, quite a few bits, uh, quite a few deliveries to talk about this week. Uh, two quick apologies first. One is my chair, which suddenly seems to have developed a, a crazy defect and is squeaking, so apologies for that. And apologies for just uh, one setup on this episode because I'm a bit short of time. And the derby kicks off in an hour, and some things are more important. And opening cardboard boxes. This has just turned up, literally. It was left for me uh, next door while I was filming the first segment. Uh, yeah, the shop next door is called Notches Fruit, the source of much hilarity among certain people. Anyway, this was left for me, the Vanessa Syndrome parcel for this month. Uh, and let's have a look what we got. Completely forgot what I ordered. Um, what's the day today? 24th. That's not bad time. It's probably the earliest it's arrived uh, this year. Let's see what we got. Random bit of paper. Uh, not my biggest, but uh, still plenty to look at. To look. Okay. Vinegar syndrome this month. We have Midnight Desires. Ah, yeah. This is one of the Quality X titles. Um, Midnight Desire has been looking forward to this. Directed by Sean Costello. I have a number of his films. And of course, this, this sports all host of uh, legendary Triple X stars like Jimmy Gillis, Eric Edwards, uh, and Vanessa Del Rio. Uh, 1975, one of the early ones, Midnight Desires. But uh, yeah, really pleased with this. Another. And, yeah, an audio commentary as well, which is uh, essential. I love an audio commentary on these. Because um, what you find, I said, well, while I've been writing this uh, Gary Graver biography, is one thing you've found is it's so hard to put, tell stories about this era. I mean, there's one website that does a ridiculously phenomenal job, and that's called The Rialto Report. If you have a good time, if you're interested in triple X movies, check out The Rialto report they are phenomenal and uh, they do a phenomenal job over there just just ridiculous to try and bring some historical context to these movies but to have a commentary is uh is, is essential and it's fantastic so yeah really really cool um the new cinematography film uh from uh paul schrader called touch i did actually see this at the cinema when it came out which shows my age um but yeah, this is pretty cool. Uh, sadly, it's, it's not on 4K UHD, and also sadly it's Region A locked. That's one of the downsides to this month's lot from Vinegar Syndrome, is quite a number of them are Region A locked, which is fine for me, it doesn't matter. But uh, so few of my customers have got the capability to uh, play multi-region Blu-rays, so unfortunately I shall just be enjoying this myself, but that's okay, I can deal with that, and I'm sure... Vinegar Syndrome will surprise us later in the year with some uh, other stuff. This this is interesting. Uh, Kinski's Paganini. Um, Multi-regional. Lots of stories behind this. I've just been doing a little project for 88 Films on Klaus Kinski for a title that's just uh, currently unannounced. And uh, yeah, I, I caught a lot of his work and heard some of the stories about Paganini, which was all one of his last films. It was one of those films he was desperate to get Werner Herzog to make and I think he presented him with the script and with the idea a number of times but Herzog flatly refused uh, so uh, Kinski went off and made it himself I think it was his penultimate film in the end um, 
but yeah really looking forward to this because it's never had a, a release of any substance so uh, that should be pretty cool um, Bleeding Skull uh, are putting out movies now which is very cool indeed and this one is The Other Dimension and the films of Fabio Salerno um, which yeah it should be uh, pretty cool he's described as the missing link between Dario Argento and George and Mike Kukar um, so yeah should be really uh, interesting he's a couple of feature length films as a documentary as well and a number uh, of shorts um, so yeah that should be quite a trippy one I reckon but I reckon I've uh, I have the customers to uh, that that should satisfy I think I, I know who they are I think I know who they are what else have we got here we have the house where death lives uh, this is Spanish one is it I think it might be no no it looks uh, American by all accounts which is pretty cool uh, but again region A locked which is a shame um, uh, Joseph Cotton's in it as well Joseph Cotton is in it uh, it looks like great film it looks a great film 1981 um, yeah the house where death lives uh, I think um, I have this already dying yeah I do <laughs> sometimes I don't even know what I've got uh, lady reporter but vinegar syndrome have added their two cents to this uh, again a region a locked disc but lots of special features that differ from the edition that's out in the UK here so probably not worth du du a double dip but here we are we have it and uh, that's fine it's a really good film anyway so it's not like it's not going to be seen and another great oh, I mean look at that that's uh, just phenomenal isn't it just the packaging is just off the chart crazy which story Alessandro Capone film um, yeah yeah Italian a prime slice of Italian splatter 4k UHD I'm, I'm guessing the blu-ray is in here as well uh, this is region a B and C so it means my customers can take a look at that and uh, yeah looks a fine film do not know much about it um, but yeah it's uh, it's a dirt little debut of this guy who wrote Ruggiero Diodato's film I've forgotten what's it called I did read it at least eight seconds ago um, ah, body count so from the right to a body count well, that's interesting cool ah, put that together what else have we got here intimate lessons hmm where could this be from ah it's quality X it's another milieu scene film intimate lessons directed by Philip Marshak ah again all the cool kids are in there Kate Parker Paul Thomas very nice William Margold as well uh, not so much with the special features here this 1982 film not so much with the special features but still it's another triple X film that would otherwise be long forgotten so even bare bones it's still a great um, a great addition to the library well obviously I can't rent it out but it's a great addition to my personal library oh that was close um, latest from Agfa is hey folks it's the intermission time video party um, this was a thing where I think something weird video put six you know, VHS compilation videos out with movie and drive-in ads um, so it's like a mixtape I'm guessing this is two discs this is 718 minutes so that's 12 hours um, and that's a lot of entertainment so I don't quite know what you're going to get other than just a really bizarre range of ads and, and, and things but uh, yeah it should be really cool I think this is this is one to have on in the background of parties maybe and finally someone made a documentary about video stores how crazy is that uh, mom and pop the inside video store inside of oh no the indie video store boom of the 80s and 90s there we are uh, looks really cool it's got some good people in this hasn't it who are we interviewing oh yeah Lloyd Kaufman Tim Ritter 
uh, Brad Sykes, and profiles on existing video stores as well. So that's pretty cool. Um, interesting, yeah. So I'm looking forward to that. Let's see uh, how my um, American contemporaries are doing. So, Vinegar Syndrome is here. Again, I don't think it's the greatest month. I don't think it, it's, it's one of those months from Vinegar Syndrome that's uh, kind of shaking me to the core and, and making me weak at the knees. But it's still a, a good month. And, and irrespective of what came in, they're still putting out stuff that nobody would touch with a barge pole. So, you know, that's, that's cool. Um, I'm going to spend just a quick second speaking about uh, a company called uh, Alibri. Uh, Ol- Alibri? Alibri? A L I B R I S dot co dot uk. I've had an issue recently. Obviously, I'm, I'm, I buy a lot of discs from elsewhere, especially the states. Um, so sci-fi films and um, asylum films and old films that never came out over here. And I've always traditionally bought them for the last twenty years on eBay, but eBay now are charging such a ridiculous amount. It's part of this international shipping policy that they do, whereby you no longer that the seller no longer packs it up and ships it themselves at their local post office. Well, some do, but majority don't. They send it to this warehouse where eBay acts on behalf of them and sends it abroad, abroad on their behalf. This is great. I've benefited from this personally when, when selling uh, stuff. But if you're a buyer, all it does is make your postage absolutely sky high. Because what I'm... I'm struggling with at the moment is i'm trying to complete collections i'm trying to you know maybe i've got a a, a gig for 88 or arrow i'm trying to, trying to get research materials in uh, research films films that i haven't seen in years that are d- difficult to come by and what i find is that um that the, the film cost will be four pound or five pound which is fine but postage from the united states via ebay is is 18 and 19 pound which is just absolutely crazy it means the cost of the disc goes up to 22 and 23 pound so as a company thanks to a customer uh, tip off it's a company i now use called alibri.co.uk um and they're fantastic they're absolutely fantastic i've used them i think i placed my fifth order or sixth order with them the other day and um it takes a long time to get them maybe three or four weeks uh, to get your discs in the post but the shipping is is just on another level. I mean, this is the last shipment that came in. Uh, at a sci-fi, uh, S-Y-F-Y, sci-fi channel movie that, that came in that I, I was desperate to get, Chupacabra Terror, directed by one of my uh, good friends, John Shepard. Um, so desperate to get that. And I got a, an asylum film that I didn't think I was ever going to get because the price was too prohibitive. Uh, the Legends of Bloody Jack. Um, a couple of Fred Owen Ray films. Uh, oh, sorry, one of Fiddle Ray film, uh, Air Rage with Ice T, uh, and that's the really nice, swanky Paramount disc as well with a commentary and a couple of other bits on it. So that's very cool indeed. It came sealed. Uh, a couple more sci fi bits showed down at Area 51 uh, with Jeremy London, or is it Jason London? Um, one of the Londons. Yeah, the one that was in Broken Vessels, the brilliant film that no one talked about. Not the one that was in uh, Mallrats. That's there. Uh, Kraken, the Tibor uh, Tekach um, directed film, uh, which again, keen to see, never got a release. None of these got a release uh, in this country. Uh, the Jim Wynorski film Rangers that came in, which has a commentary by Wynorski himself uh, under the name of Jay Andrews. Uh, so that came in. Again, no UK release. And also the uh, Gary Jones film Ghouls with a nice. Um, glowy kind of sleeve so i got all of these this from my latest shipment it's five six pound a piece five six pound a piece but then the shipping now compared to the 20 pound or so that ebay were charging for shipping alibri charge between three and four pound per disc so a five pound disc you're paying eight pound eight pound fifty to ship to the uk which you know is almost a third of the price of eBay. And yeah, it takes longer, and yes, the tracking isn't particularly good. So I would recommend small orders, um, you know, just, just two or three discs at a time, nothing too uh, expensive. But yeah, absolutely over the moon with these. Uh, I could say I've got two more orders in ship, uh, in transit at the moment. And um, yeah, absolutely over the moon, just completing some collections I never thought I'd get done because the eBay price was just 
crazy. So yeah, this is a website that I definitely recommend. And I'm getting some amazing films uh, that I've been desperate to get for quite some time. So yeah, that is a big success story at the moment. Uh, and one last thing, I uh, had a guy, I mean, this is a really sad story. had a guy, uh, I'm an eBay whore, I really am. I just browse eBay for hours, looking at all kinds of um, films, mainly DVDs that, that just out of print or weird and wonderful stuff that um, you don't tend to see around anymore. And I stumbled across a load of um, erotica, uh, softcore, stuff the Blockbuster used to stock at the uh, turn of the millennium, 1999, 2000, 2001. And I got chatting to the guy, as I invariably do. And um, he was saying that he works in a charity shop. And um, a load of DVDs got donated. But the manager asked the, tra- uh, the charity shop took one look at them and said, right, well, they're going in the bin. They're not going on the shelf. They must be, obviously, destroyed ASAP. Uh, and the entrepreneurial young man that he was, he said, right, well, I'm going to put those on eBay to see if they sell. And he was absolutely right, because uh, an eagle-eyed punter like me uh, was keen on them. Uh, because uh, it weren't, they weren't just any softcore films from the late 90s. They were the Masseuse Trilogy. Now, the Masseuse Trilogy was uh, made by Royal Oaks, Andrew Stevens' company, uh, at, at, the, at the end of the millennium. Um, and um, I think, that, yeah, not the greatest eroticas, admittedly, but they're still culturally significant because uh, Fred and Ray directed the first two and Gary Graver directed the third one. Uh, Gary Graver also shot the first masseuse and the second masseuse. However, this might give you some idea as to how impossible it is to keep track of things in the UK, well, certainly back then, with regard to titles and to t- and title changes. For example, masseuse, which was uh, released in 1996, uh, was released in this country as American masseuse, which is, is fair. That's kind of a similar title. But then the sequel, masseuse 2, which was released in 1988, 1998, was released here as the Black Stocking Diary, right? And then Masseuse 3, which was released in 1999, was released here as Hell Hath No Fury 2. Um, And of course it bears no relation at all to Hell Hath No Fury. But then Hell Hath No Fury in this country was actually Friend of the Family 2, a Fred and Ray film from a couple of years earlier. So there was no film called Hell Hath No Fury. It was just retitled titles from the US. So Hell Hath No Fury 2 was Masseuse 3. Hell Hath No Fury 1 was Friend of the Family 2. Ah, it's pretty wild. Anyway, if you if you read um, Matty Budrevich's Masseuse essay on the schlockpit.com, that kind of fills in all the blanks because I know you're desperate to find out about these now. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I was absolutely thrilled to get those as um, I am a collector of erotica and um, they're, they're pretty cool, yeah. Okay, there's no, no quiz this week. I think I might have to rethink the format slightly. I'm not sure if it, not sure if it works, I'm not sure if it's just too bewildering. Um, but we'll think about it. We'll think about it. Anyway, um, we had two winners last week. Um, lots of you went for Welcome to Sarajevo, Sarajevo, which is actually located in the indie section. So thank you, but close. Uh, so is Wendy and Lucy. I know a few of you went for that as well. Welcome to the Dollhouse in my Todd Haynes section. Uh, hence why it wasn't that one. Welcome to the Jungle, I don't have. Isn't that bizarre? I don't have Welcome to the Jungle. I don't have Welcome to the Punch. So that, that's a bit weird. But yeah, Jungle, I mean... I can sense a hundred Dwayne Johnson fans abandoning this video in their droves. Uh, I'm a Peter Berg fan too, ironically. Uh, and it has an epic Chris Walken performance. So, uh, yeah, I probably need to address that. I don't know. Some, sometimes films just kind of disappear th- for one reason or another. A customer will come in and begging maybe to buy one for a present or something. And saying, yeah, my little boy wants desperate for a copy of this can i buy yours i'm like oh yeah i'll sell you mine i'll buy another one i'll I'll get it in a couple of weeks and i slips out my mind so yeah anyway um the correct answer though was 
Wet Hot American Summer, directed by none other than David Wayne, which isn't me. Uh, yeah, my namesake. Um, I do actually get tweets from time to time asking when there will be a sequel to Wet Hot American Summer, and that I don't know. Anyway, no quiz this week. Uh, I'll give you a rest. However, we had two oh, two winners. Yeah, jeez. Uh, two winners were Matt, Matt Blogs, Matt Blogs, and uh, M62 Films, which might not be his real name. Um, so, two winners. I'm going to flip a coin, the old, uh, the old classic thing. So, we're going to go for heads, Matt, and we're going to go for tails, M62 Films. So, whoever wins this gets a stack of a couple of Blu-rays, a couple of DVDs, but there's some good stuff, and I'll post them out. Just DM me your uh, details. Oh, dropped it. It's tails. So, congratulations, M62 Films, who has won a stack of... Uh, films from your local video store. Uh, yeah, DM me your details and I'll get them sent out. I was going to take a quick look at the comments uh, section. It's one of those things where you start doing a video like this and you think about three people will watch it. And then you end up looking at your comments section. There's about 50 comments that you can't always reply to or you're in the middle of cooking tea and you think, well, I'll get around to replying to that. And you never do. And you feel a bit guilty. Uh, Jason Ellis, 9550, hello from Louisville, Kentucky, in the good old USA. Your channel has become my new favorite physical media video. Good Lord, crazy. Um, very nice indeed, very nice indeed. Um, what do we got here? Uh, love the channel, says UNWK. Uh, before Trilogy set its excellence, says Barney St a, a lovely upgrade on the DVDs. Yes, it is, Barney. Absolutely fantastic. I'm thrilled with the Before Trilogy set. Absolutely superb. Um, yeah, Tom Jolliffe, who, of course, is uh, a screenwriter of films that we love dearly here. Um, he says that Germany, uh, based on like last week's show, Germany is one of the few places that he can buy his own films. And that's a terrifying prospect, isn't it? It always scares me that, you know, people writing films and making them, directing them for platforms like Tubi. Um, it scares me that stuff can go on that platform and disappear and you have no hard copy of it, which is just crazy. That's one of the great things about Germany. They do release some utter crap, no offense, uh, on, on DVD and Blu-ray, which is great for me because that's the stuff I buy. And it's good that at least somewhere in the world, that there is a copy of these films that just barely cause a ripple in the physical entertainment market. Now, Kyle McLaughlin, not the real Kyle McLaughlin, um, says that St. Maud is the best British horror film of the last 10 years. You have a point. St. Maud is indeed a very good film, but I would still go for the uh, Borderlands uh, above them, in all honesty. Um, Westworld, yeah, good, good guess, good guess, Stuart Holmes, but unfortunately Westworld is in the sci-fi section, so it wouldn't have been over there. Uh, what else we got? We need to talk about Kevin, yeah, yeah. Good episode. Um, welcome to the point from Sarajevo, yeah. Uh, Westworld sci-fi, yes, you see, you're learning, you're learning. Uh, Jason Ellis, speaking of Eurospy movies, you should check out what Terrorvision has just put up for Prodi, yeah. I've not, I've not bought into the television thing at the moment. I've not bought into the television thing at the moment. Um, followed Brad a few times on, on Twitter, but he doesn't follow back for some reason. Um, I had a look at his followers, and admittedly I'm probably not the demographic <coughs> um, that Brad follows. Um, and yeah, um, so I think about 60 or 70% of their releases are Region A locked which is a bit weird because uh, they're so niche you wouldn't anticipate other territories picking those up for release so i don't understand why so many of their releases are region locked um but hey you know contracts and uh, home entertainment aren't necessarily my thing so yeah uh i love the shop adam schofield says must visit one day you are more than welcome um, and correctly, Fish 75 says, West Side Story is out of place in the quiz. And again, another week, another title out of sync, out of order in the alphabetical section. So, yeah. Oh, guess is uh, We're No Angels, uh, which is a very good guess. And again, it's a film I'm not sure if I have. 
Um, but when you're guessing for this, you should, you could, if time permits, take a look at my online database, which is accessible via the Snips Movies Facebook page and the Snips Movies Instagram page. Um, and then if you're guessing, you can double check that I have the title by checking it on the database. But thank you so much for all your comments. It was a crazy week for people expressing opinions and, and uh, again, a lot, of positivity, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of positivity about the show, which is very, very humbling. Uh, and yeah, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. But let's see what's on loan this week. Okay, time now for a quick look at the What's On Loan section. Another great little group of films I just plucked out from the uh, from the store. Um, again, I know I sound like a broken record here, but one of the great places about going to a video store is that it's anti-algorithm. And this perfectly encapsulates this. I had a new customer this week um, who loved browsing. And um, yeah, they went for One Cut of the Dead and The Thin Man. Which, um, you know, if you watch One Cut of the Dead on Netflix, I don't think it's going to have uh, the thin man in your algorithm, you know. It might do. You never know. Uh, but yeah, uh, One Cut of the Dead and the Thin Man. I loved One Cut of the Dead. What a brilliant film. Third Window. They do put out some great films, Third Window, in the UK. They put out a great edition of uh, The Door 1 and 2. Uh, only a few months ago. Uh, there it is. Yeah, brilliant, absolutely fantastic. What a film! If you're not seeing the door, go and go and buy it from Third Window. It's an excellent horror film, and the sequel is pretty cool as well. Um, but yeah, great. I love that anti-algorithm stuff. The thin man is great, and one of those people again that comes in with a list. And I said, you know, you'll start off with your with your small list when you start renting. But then you watch The Thin Man, and you're already going to add five films onto that to make the whole Thin Man collection. So uh, it's amazing how lists start so small, but then they just escalate to being out of control. Big fan of Sidney Lumet, so it's really cool to see Running on Empty guy out this week. One of those films that never really gets talked about as much in his canon. I mean, when you've directed films like Dog the Afternoon, Serpico, and Twelve Angry Men, admittedly Running on Empty just won't feature in that top three or top five even, uh, if you include The Verdict and, and things like that. But Running on Empty is, is one of my favourites of his. I love that film. Judd Hirsch's stunning performance and River Phoenix is absolutely mesmeric. It's a great film. It's great to see it being rented out. Um, this is one of the films that someone brings up to the counter and I'm like, I do a double take. How did you even know that film existed uh and that's jesus's son from the director of uh, crush um yeah it's a good film and was it 90 99 in the 90s i haven't seen it in probably 20 years i remember it being really decent cameos from dennis hopper and people like that and uh yeah holly hunter dennis leary so it, it's great to see something like that renting out which it's probably on streaming but uh not something that you would go searching for unless you kind of stumbled across it in a video store and held it in your hand and thought, this looks like a really cool film. Um, Billy Crudup, I mean, what a great actor he was. I, I thought he was going to be a massive star, really. Um, the Angel Share, our old friend Gaz has rented this. He rented it the other night. Uh, not for the first time either. I know, I mean, every Ken Loach film has a socio-realistic aspect to it. But this one is genuinely upbeat. It, it's, it's a lovely film. It's heartwarming. Not the, necessarily the adjectives you'll use with, with a Ken Loach film normally. But this is great. Um, yeah, I do love this film. Uh, and also, again, Ken Loach in, in uh, a, a canon of a multitude of, of films, iconic films that go from Kez and, you know, um, the more recent ones that you got so many plaudits for this this really does stand out and it's probably not one that um gets talked about all that much but the angel share is absolutely fantastic we have a directed twosome which i know i like to point out from time to time uh, a bit of a left field directed to twosome it's paul wenkos uh yeah this is our old friend jake our old cameraman here who uh rented canon for cordoba with george peppard uh i used to pronounce it peppard but listening to Quentin Tarantino on podcasts, it's now Papard, which sounds far better. Um, 
And um, we also have the Mephisto Waltz with Alan Alder that um, Signal One put out over here on Blu-ray and DVD in the UK a few years ago. I don't know why I got the DVD, but yeah, not to worry. So yeah, uh, two great films, and that one's on the old um, MOD range from MGM. Speaking of M uh, MOD, um, the Warner Archive collection has really kicked on this week. Just moving it to that easily browsable section has, has made the world a difference. People are stopping and browsing and picking up films and looking at stuff and sort of gasping at th things that they haven't seen for 20, 30 years or maybe things they've heard of but never thought they would see. Um, so naturally the first film that rented from it was Gummo, <laughs> the Harmony Corinne film, uh, which is always a, a fine dose of crazy. Um, but yeah, still, it's good to see it going out. Um, uh, yeah it's a film all right isn't it it's a film all right good grief one of those i should probably watch again but i don't know if i could it's such an odd film but yeah um like so many of how many koreans films uh but still moving on um just a weird one to finish the week off uh the 10 again by my namesake david wayne um comedy that i have never seen i've had it in stock since it came out which is it probably surfaced in the uk maybe 15 years ago i don't think anyone rented it i don't think anyone has rented it in the last decade and a half um and someone did and they requested it by name interesting to see what they think because genu generally i think it was thought of quite um i don't think it made much of an impact if you like it, let me know, because um, it looks interesting. It's certainly got a great cast. But yeah, I'd be interested to find out what they think of this. But there we go. There's a, a segment, a section of what's been renting at uh, Snips Movies this week. Final segment for this week is um, Sleeping Giant. Uh, I do like these because it, it highlights again um well you know it, we go back to the guardian article on on the store that was uh published about 10 days ago now and one of the things one of the things that just just wove its way through the comment section um in that article was the fact that people were just so you know well you know i can get anything at the push of a button anything but you can't you really can't i mean I just, I just wish people would, would realize how limited your, your options are with streaming and how fragile they are with streaming with, with regard to things disappearing and appearing and not being available. Crazy. Anyway, th this is our, our three for this week and none of them are streaming in the UK. Uh, well, as of today, uh, in April 2024. I mentioned Gummo and, and this kind of fits with it to a degree and uh, it's uh, larry clark's another day in paradise could this be larry clark's most accessible film possibly it could be his le least problematic film possibly even though it stars james woods who is quite problematic in himself with his um uh, interesting worldview um but yeah i like this film i i i'd like to say i like most of larry clark's work i find it interesting i find interesting works like kids and ken park and teenage caveman and what's up rockers interesting films they're they're difficult and i think with every year that's passed i think they've become more difficult to to watch but uh yeah they're an interesting selection but nevertheless um i think this is one of his best if not his best and um you can't stream it so it's uh rent another day in paradise on dvd and you can still pick it up uh, fairly cheaply on ebay as well so if you want to own a copy uh great cast with uh, melanie griffith and natasha gregson wagner as well this is an issue isn't it hell drive is one of the best british films of the 50s stunning film um the first lead role for stanley baker it's brilliant it's an absolute say si, si enfield uh, directed it it's an absolute classic Bonafide classic, but again, Network held the rights of it. Network put it out on DVD. Network put it out on Blu-ray. Network went bust. 
you can't stream it. It's become very difficult to buy it now for for a, a price that's uh, affordable. And it's just a shame, isn't it? Again, I spoke about the fragility of streaming, but you know, physical media isn't untouchable. It does have a fragile edge to it. Um, so it would be a shame if this film uh, disappeared because of the circumstances of this company. But I'm sure the rights, the rights will revert back to the owner at some point, and hopefully uh, another company will reissue it in a, uh, a similarly lavish edition. This was a uh, this was a lavish edition compared to the usual network stuff. Um, but to be honest, as, as, the, as the company went on, they did put a lot more effort into the special features and bits and bobs. So uh, yeah. But yeah, what a film, what a film. Unavailable, unavailable for streaming. Um, Unrest. I do like this film. I, as a horror film, I think it's really, really cool. Um, it was part of the first, I don't know if you remember the After Dark Horror Fest. The After Dark Horror Fest, they had one a year, and inevitably they all released them to DVD with a banner After Dark Horror Fest above it, except in the UK where yeah, we were without that. Um, this was the first year of the After Dark Horror Fest. And I must admit, if you look up on Wikipedia, the films that were in that festival this in, in the first year, they are fan, all fantastic horror films. And I would seek every one of those eight out. You had stuff like Joe Cardone's Wicked Little Things, uh, Richard Brandes as Penny Dreadful, Mike Mendez as The Grave Dancers. And this, this is uh, on par with The Grave Dancers as being the best of that eight. It's a wonderful, really unsettling film and I think that involves a mortuary and morgues and dead bodies kind of really gets my skin crawling um, and yeah I, I think this is definitely one of the best uh, not streaming which is unusual for a horror film because they normally get picked up by Shudder or turn up on one of the uh, free V or Amazon Prime sites uh, but strangely this isn't on either of those and I would definitely recommend finding it and picking it up and putting it as part of your collection to treasure because it is definitely worth treasuring a genuinely spooky film okay we're just about done for today uh, again thanks again apologies for the lack of action in this episode um but hey uh short of time so to save time i thought i would uh, plant myself in one place Nevertheless, if you want to follow the store on Facebook, you can. If you search for Snips Movies, you can follow the store on Instagram. If you search for Snips Movies on Instagram. If you want to use Twitter or the app formerly known as Twitter, you can find me under the uh, at the Dave Wayne moniker. Uh, again, thank you for all your comments. Thank you for all your positivity. Um, thank you for watching. It is quite remarkable how far we've come in six or seven weeks. Uh, absolutely crazy far better than I expected and for some reason you're finding this interesting which is perhaps the most baffling thing of all but still again thank you for watching and uh, yeah that's it I'm going to see some footy and uh, I'll catch you next week <laughs>